Big show. Molly Shannon, Josh Groban, Big Thief. Big show. I would, you know, I would go so far as to say, I would say today's show has gravitas. <laughs> would you go along with that? Would you consider this a show with gravitas? Gravitas, uh, verisimilitude. <laughs> um, <laughs> get, get spell it. You can't just say it, you've got to spell it. We'll, we'll go back and forth. V? No, no, I'm saying you spell it. <laughs> All right. V E. I don't know. <laughs> hey, it's that time. It's time for the news. And according to numbers released today, the US economy unexpectedly shrank in the first quarter of the year, the worst economic showing since the start of COVID. There's only one way to solve this. Put on the oven mitts, Joe. It's time for a bake sale. <laughs> the nation's gross domestic product declined at an annualised rate of 1.4% in the first quarter. I'm being honest, I've no idea what any of this means. <laughs> My PhD is in microeconomics, so I leave the macro stuff to the experts, you know? <laughs> no, no one cares about the scoreboard at the end of the first quarter. Do they? It's all about the final score. Does that make sense? Am I even close? I've no idea. <laughs> Literally grasping at straws here. <laughs> Do you know what it means? I don't think it's good. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. I'm aware it's not good, but I don't know where... I don't know... I don't get... I don't I'm, know enough about it. I mean, if I think if you want to get into the nitty-gritty, there are still several strong economic indicators that show that we're not headed for a recession. Uh, <laughs> but inflation has decreased the value of a dollar, which puts the American consumer in a place where they don't feel like spending as freely, which then tightens up the economy a bit and halts growth. But no, I wouldn't say I really understand it. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ian. Let's go to Reggie for the weather. <laughs> Moving on, as you know, the White House Correspondents' Dinner is this weekend with President Biden scheduled to attend, but to limit his COVID risk, it was announced that Biden will skip the eating portion of the event. Not a big sacrifice. He usually eats dinner around 3.30. <laughs> Honestly, never, ever has President Biden been more relatable than this moment right now. <laughs> Making up a half-hearted excuse to get out of a work dinner is all of us, isn't it? Also, people don't know this, he's in his bulking phase. <laughs> he is, it's a strict schedule. He has to eat around 4,000 calories of codfish every three hours before he gets his pump on in the Iron Temple. You know? <laughs> In other political news, Sarah Palin is, in, uh, is running in a special election to fill Alaska's empty congressional house seat, but she faces a formidable opponent with lots of name awareness. This is completely true. She is running against Santa Claus. <laughs> it's true. His legal name is Santa Claus, and he's a liberal city councilman from North Pole, Alaska. Here he is here. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, how does this even play out? Even if you win, what do you say? Yeah, absolutely destroyed Santa Claus. <laughs> this is true, Santa Claus is pretty liberal. He supports Bernie Sanders and champions child welfare, although technically it does depend on whether the child has been naughty or nice. <laughs> Very open about that. I hope this campaign doesn't get... I hope it doesn't become dirty, you know? It would really bum me out. Bum the world out if, if like, Palin's people started digging up scandals, and it turns out that Santa killed a hitchhiker in 1982. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Caught him by accident, had to reverse back over him. <laughs> Still didn't line it up, only got the legs, had to finish him <laughs> off. Had to finish him off with a shovel. <laughs> Fed him to the reindeers. Now he just sits in the dark, glass of milk. TV just on the static. <laughs> Thinks back to that night, and the crazy thing is, it's the only time he's happy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine you're the campaign manager, right? You're the campaign manager, you're working for Santa Claus, you're going up against Sarah Palin, what's the strategy? I, I, I mean, I think I'd go to the voters and I'd say, you know, he sees you when you're sleeping. <laughs> he knows when you're awake. 
<laughs> he knows if you've been bad or good, so play ball or we're gonna leak some stuff to the news. Mm. <laughs> Can I be honest? I, when I found out that, I don't wanna say it, if you've got kids around, I won't say it. <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't look at Rob, because Rob, Rob is scarred by the fact that his children found out a secret about Santa Claus at school. I've never seen him, but he was full of rage. Full of rage. <laughs> They're 19 and 26. <laughs> I, uh, I'm Jewish, I'll say it. Santa Claus no! isn't real. <laughs> And we thought this was interesting. <laughs> Canada's government could soon add a very specific set of crimes to their criminal code, crimes committed on the moon. Until now, there were no such laws on the books. You know what they're talking about, right? You know what this is about, right? You know, you get it? They're talking about moon murder. <laughs> I mean, there's other crimes, but predominantly, this is about moon murder. <laughs> so soon, people can get arrested for committing crimes on the moon, but the moon gets off scot-free when it hits my eye like a big pizza pie. This isn't... <laughs> is this fair? <laughs> the most shocking thing about this is that Canadian moon crimes isn't already a CBS procedural. This fall after the equalizer. <laughs> and that, that's the news. Um, so, before we go to break, I've, I've some news of my own to share with you. Um, seven and a half years ago, I started hosting this show, and there's no other way to put it, it has changed my life. I love it. I love all the people that work here. I am so proud of what we've achieved. It's been beyond my wildest, wildest dreams. So I'm, I'm happy to announce today that I've signed a new contract to carry on hosting The Late Late Show. Well, wait, hang on. Wait, because that's... I appreciate it. <laughs> that's really only half the story on this one. Um, no, uh... The other half is, the sadder news is I've decided, um, I've decided to sign for one more year on the show and that this will be, this will be my last year hosting The Late Late Show. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> this will be my last year hosting the show. Um, you know, when, when, I, when, I, when I started this, when I started this journey, it was always going to be just that. It was going to be a journey, an adventure. I, I never saw it as my final destination, you know, and I, I never want this show to overstay its welcome in any way. I always want to love making it, and uh, I really think in a year from now, that'll be a good time to, to move on and, and see what else might be out there, okay? But I gotta tell you, we're not leaving today. We still have a year to go, and I am, we are all determined to make this the best year we have ever had making this show. We are going to go out with a bang. There's going to be carpools and crosswalks and sketches and other surprises and... And there'll be, there's, there'll be tears. There'll be so many tears. Because um, this has been the hardest decision I've ever had to make. It really has. I've, I've never taken this job for granted, ever. Not once. And if you... The fact that you watch us at home or you watch us online, wherever you are, all over the world, the fact that we get to try and entertain you and spend time with you is an absolute privilege for me and every single person who makes this show. Um, here's to the next 12 months. It is going to be a blast. I promise you that. We'll be right back with more of The Late Late Show, everybody. <laughs>